Hey everyone, this is Lyndon back again, excited for another ActionVFX.com tutorial. So if you've kind of been tagging along with the ActionVFX community, like through the Facebook page, or, or you just got something from the website, or just been following along with these tutorials, if you haven't been, well, that's, that's just a different story. That's a, that's a different issue we got to talk about. But you know, okay, if you have been, you've probably seen this clip of Luke running away from these ground cracks. Not sure what it is. It might be an earthquake. It might be a monster coming up from under the ground. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But honestly, this is just an excuse to use some ActionVFX.com ground cracking elements, all right? And since you guys have probably seen this clip before, it's going to be kind of fun showing you how we did it, uh, the visual effects behind it and all that stuff. All right, I guess that's what we're going to focus on today, so there's not much else to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start by dragging our footage into a new composition. Let's hold it over that icon right there. It'll create a new composition just like that. Okay, so you guys have seen the final result. You kind of know what's going on here. But, um, you know, basically the ground's cracking in. And Luke's kind of one of these people who wants to survive. So, you know, he's getting out of there. Um, in fact, I noticed he was wearing this um, pretty boring sweater. Or actually, I think it's a pretty cool sweater. You know, I think Luke... He knows how to look cool, right? He's wearing this cool sweater. I like that sweater. Let's go ahead and trim this footage up just a little bit. So we'll make it start. Maybe just as he goes to look back there. And then we'll trim it up after he leaves the screen. Give a little extra time. And let's trim it about right there. So we'll drag this in. Right click. Trim. Comp to work area. Pretty cool. Um, What we need to do now, we've made several other stock footage compositing tutorials and you know the first step is always to track the scene so how are we going to track this particular scene we can right click um, do it just a simple track motion we can track the camera but in this video we're going to use a really good tool for after effects called mocha pro now um, it doesn't come with after effects but you do have this option of using mocha ae and this is mocha for after effects but we're going to use mocha pro and it is far more advanced far more powerful but we'll just be presenting techniques it's just about the techniques you can use these techniques regardless of what tool set you have so let's go ahead and get started tracking the scene with mocha pro so we do this by going to effects and presets after you've installed mocha pro we'll type in mocha pro and we'll apply this to the footage okay the next step is go ahead and click this icon and it, okay so this warning comes up and it says we're not in full resolution so that this warning is really nice um, it basically says we need to be in full resolution so we'll hit the mocha icon there and uh, mocha pro is going to open up so let's go ahead and go to the very end here and uh, the way mocha works is it's a planner tracker um, it tracks surfaces. Now it, it can do a lot more, um, but it's really, really good when it comes to tracking surfaces in kind of two-dimensional planes. So this is perfect for this scene, and you guys are going to see how how amazing this is going to work. So we'll click this tool up here. Let's go ahead and draw a shape, just kind of around the position our element's going to be, something like that. I kind of want to include some of this detail here, some of this detail over here. And also I want to kind of reach up here to, to kind of capture some of those contrasted areas. So um, we have translation, scale, rotation, and shear. Perspective is probably not necessary in this particular shot because there's not enough camera movement. Um, so that's good right there. Let's go ahead and start tracking backwards by clicking this button here. So we're kind of come we're kind of coming to a little issue here, and his feet are about to enter into this track, and that's going to cause a problem. It's going to kind of mess up the track. So Mocha has a really nice way of getting around this. Okay, we've tracked so far. Let's go ahead and lock this so nothing changes. And the way we go about fixing these these different foreground motions that may disturb or mess up our track is by creating another layer that will function as a mask to obscure that section of the footage so that our main track won't track that section. Of the footage that would disturb our track so we'll click this tool again and we're going to draw a little um, shape around his legs like this and then we can just kind of move back and kind of position this so that it always covers his legs and there's a feature about these masks that is really amazing so if we just check translation here translation and just go ahead and start tracking backwards It'll track every single frame. So in After Effects, you would, you would kind of interpret this as a keyframe every single frame. But what we're able to do is make an adjustment on one of these frames, for this first one, for instance. And throughout all of these keyframes, it'll interpolate that change. So that's what I really like about Mocha, is that it interpolates your changes throughout those frames. So I go here, and, and those changes have been made from one keyframe all the way to another. Okay, so I think you guys get the point about how cool that is. 
Alright, so now that I've quickly made that roto around Luke's legs, this will automatically work as a mask for this first original layer so that this original layer will not track this part of the footage. So I have this I have this roto right here above the original ground track. And that's telling layer one, this original ground track, not to track where the layer two is, the layer that's above itself. Okay, so we don't have to worry about Luke's legs at all now. We can just track in peace. Okay, so now you can see that the track is kind of veering off to the side here, and we want to track more of this area over here. So this is a really another cool feature about um, Mocha, is that you can move the tracker mask without it actually moving tracking data, all right? So this is generating a track, a motion. It's generating transform data. And But if we just move the tracker mask here, it's not going to change that transform data. It's just going to start tracking a different part of the footage. See, this pink grid represents the transform data. This is just the transform mask. We can move this mask however we want, and it's not going to interfere with our perfect peaceful track like Luke's legs. So let's let's just move this around so we can get this nice. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and continue our very uh, meditative peaceful track. And this is something that I forgot to mention at the time. We do want to lock this, this mask we have around his legs because if we begin to track backwards, then it's going to retrack this mask around his legs, and we don't want that to happen. So go ahead and lock that mask so it doesn't mess it up, and then let's continue tracking our ground layer, finally. Okay, so we're finished with this track, and you can see how lovely of an experience this was tracking with Mocha. I mean, this is just like eating at a silver diner. I mean, this is uh, this has been a lovely experience, other than the fact that, you know, Luke's legs come in here to mess up our nice track. Like, listen, Luke, I know you're trying to survive this earthquake and everything, but man, you, you gotta watch out for my track. You just messed everything up. No, it actually reminds me of the time, like, um someone has a dream about you and in, your, in their dream you do something bad so the next morning they're just all mad at you because you did something bad in their dream but I'm, st I'm still mad at Luke now I messed up my track no actually I'm in a good mood now because this track turned out so good so what we'll do to send this data to After Effects we'll click on layer 1 hit export tracking data and um, we'll choose After Effects transform data position scale and rotation that's what we need for this shot so we'll hit copy to clipboard we we'll hit the X button we'll hit save and we'll create a new null object. So control turn shift Y or right click new null object. Call this ground tracking. And now let's go to the very first frame because that's when the first keyframe is going to be. And then we'll hit control V or edit paste. Okay, so this null object is like hammered to the ground. This thing is stuck there solid. See, like sometimes when you track with After Effects, it's not like hammered to the ground. See, it's just kind of glued to the ground. Mocha just nails those objects to the ground. Okay, so we got our nice ground tracking. So let's go ahead and start compositing those elements. So let's go down here. We have some ground cracking stock footage. Dragging these last two ones that kind of travel across the ground. So let's go back to the very beginning of our shot. And let's think about a little bit where we're going to place these elements. So we can see here that Luke kind of turns around. He looks at the ground because there's a kind of a crack coming in here. So we got to kind of place that where he's looking. So that last ground crack needs to be somewhere about right here. For the scale, we'll do about 85. Okay, it looks pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and turn on this other ground crack. We want these two ground cracks to kind of meet, just so they kind of meet meet together at the same point. Okay, that looks pretty sweet. Now, the next thing we need to do is kind of make the timing right. Okay, because we don't want like Luke running on these cracks. He needs to be in front of the cracks. So just make sure you got the timing right. And what we can also do, since we got this nice, perfect ground track, what we can do is go ahead and parent these these layers to the ground tracking and they should follow the ground pretty solidly and uh, like I said yeah we need to work on that timing a little bit okay so something like that so the grounds are already cracking because you know look at his face you can tell the ground must be cracking just based on his facial expression alright so so far in this tutorial we've had some very lovely time doing some boring stuff like positioning these ground elements I mean that's pretty fun right positioning ground elements um, but the fun part is where we actually do some effects so we get into those techniques and stuff like that so well, there's so many ways you can think about compositing elements like this and w one thing to notice about these is how is how they made the concrete gray so it's completely gray so this allows us to do an overlay blending mode so the overlay blending mode is kind of a mixture of the screen blending mode and the multiplied blending mode. 
but where there's gray, it, it has the illusion of being transparent. So that's exactly what we want because we don't want these gray concrete areas to show. So for this one, we'll also do an overlay blending mode. Okay, yeah, de definitely looks better, but you can see there's still some problems with the color and a little bit of the exposure. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Um, what I'll do, I'll do this front overlay element, and uh, I'll go ahead and apply a tint effect. Now, the reason I'm going to tint this, tint it makes it complete black and white, is because um, since it's on the overlay blending mode, I'll let the background define its color, right? So since we overlaid it, it's just going to inherit the color of the background. So now I just need to worry about the exposure. I'll click on the white color here, and I'll just kind of darken this until I think it matches pretty well. Okay, de yeah, it definitely looks better. Something kind of like that. And since I think this looks pretty good, I'll copy this to the other layer. Okay, so we just correct the exposure and it looks pretty good. So there's one thing I really like to do with elements like this when we overlay it on. It can look a little bit thin, like um, the element's not thick enough, really solidly, tangibly cracking the ground. What I like to do is duplicate the element, Control D, set the blending mode back to normal, and we'll call this Front Fill. And this will just kind of fill in the effect and make it look more solid. So we'll drag this below the overlay layer. And let's go ahead and solo it. What we'll do is apply an extract effect. And we can remove this tint effect. We don't need that. And what I'll do is just crush the whites in here, just so we get rid of those grays, and then add a little softness here. So we don't want these edge colors. All right, looks sweet. Let's go ahead and add a fill effect. We just kind of choose the background color, kind of like that. So you can see it really fills in the effect. Like for example, these light rays, it just kind of, like I said, make it look a little more solid. And we'll do this exact same thing for the other crack element. So we'll duplicate, turn it off of overlay, copy these effects. So um, there is one last thing I would like to do. You can see here towards the beginning, we can see a little bit of this element coming out here. It's kind of going over his feet. And it's, and it's a really good idea just to mask that out. So I'll go to the side overlay, and maybe I'll do a linear wipe effect. So I'll apply a linear wipe transition. And let's go ahead and turn this up, flip it all the way around, hold shift, just like that, add some feather. And just kind of make it go along with these cracks. So what we'll do is just do a keyframe animation. Go ahead and add a keyframe. Go back, change the value. Okay, so we got that nice keyframe animation. Okay, that looks really sweet. We can do the same exact thing for this other layer, and this time we'll just do a straight mask. And we can also keyframe the feather of this mask. Okay, there we go. It blends in so well. Let's go ahead and take a preview so you guys can see what's going on so far. Okay, I really like that. Um, just to recap all the techniques we've learned so far, let's just go ahead and composite one more element. I'll do kind of a circular ground crack element here. Just go ahead and drag it in. And we'll do this pretty quick since we've already covered all the techniques. It's just a recap. So I'll turn the scale down to about 75, something about like that. And let's make it start a little bit later. Okay. And let's go ahead and apply this to the ground tracking. So pairing it to the ground tracking. And uh, let's turn it to an overlay blending mode just like the other ones. Looks great. We'll put it just right there. And uh, let's go ahead and apply that tint effect. And we can go ahead and change these colors. Now one thing I really like to do to make sure it blends in well is add an adjustment layer. And to this adjustment layer we'll apply a brightness and contrast effect. And we'll just make a lot of contrast. So just so duplicate this maybe twice. And so we have a lot of contrast here. And this will help us tell if it blends in well together. All right, so there, if there's any difference, it'll really stand out. So we can kind of change this to where it blends in. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And we can go ahead and remove this adjustment layer. So yeah, definitely blends in pretty well. Okay, let's go ahead and do that fill technique where we kind of fill in the effects. We'll turn this to normal and uh, apply the extract effect. Go ahead and remove this tint, we don't need that. All right, let's apply a fill effect after this and uh, we'll select one of these ground colors. All right, sweet. And we can kind of control the brightness of this effect based on this fill color, right? We want the shadows here to probably match some of the other shadows. So we just kind of adjust the brightness of this fill to make it kind of match. So maybe something like this would be good. 
and we can kind of see the fake concrete here and it kind of pops into the scene. We want to fix that. So we'll go to the overlay and we'll probably just do another mask and animate that mask. Okay, and that element just smoothly creeps its way into the scene and cracks in the ground. Looks pretty darn sweet. All right, so nice. I mean, you guys would have to say this does look pretty realistic, and it was pretty easy. All we did was the overlay and then the fill. It just blended right into the scene. So um, the last thing we would want to do was add some dust elements because, you know, the concrete cracks, dust, dust is created, and that would definitely help the scene. Let's go ahead and do that. That's not the main focus of this tutorial, but we'll go ahead and do that just to make the scene look a little more realistic. Right, let's go ahead and drag in this dust wave. And the first thing I'll do is pre-compose it leave all attributes and hit OK. And this doesn't change anything. All I can do is just go in here and make some adjustments. So I'm going to get rid of this line here. So I'll grab the mask tool, subtract, feather it out. And then I'll just duplicate this mask and add more feather. OK, that looks pretty good. We just add two masks. I gave them different amounts of feather. And now let's go back to the scene. How I like to composite these type of dust elements is um, first add a solid composite because there's transparency. I'll make this black. And then add a shift channels effect. And we'll say take alpha from luminance. And this is just going to turn the luminance into opacity. Now, next, I would like to add some fractal noise. I think this is good to add to like um, dust elements because it adds variation and brightness. We want these dust elements to be a little bit brighter than 50% um, gray. So we'll turn this brightness up just a little bit. I'll go to the transform, turn up the scale. Maybe turn down the contrast to about 75. There we go. It kind of adds some variation in the brightness there. Yeah, and we want to place these dust elements on our ground crack layer as they begin to crack. So I'll place this one here and uh, maybe scale it up just a little bit for this first one. And we want to make a lot of other duplicates. Just duplicate it, move it forward in time as it begins to crack more. And we'll place it um, in a different position. And just keep making duplicates. Just place these all around. And you also want to be sure to apply these to your tracking data. Okay, so they follow the camera motion of the camera. Okay, so you can see these dust elements actually do have kind of an orange tint. And the reason why is because I didn't change the blending mode of the fractal noise. We do not want the blending mode to be normal, but we'll change this to none. And this is really important because the none blending mode blends well with transparency. If we do the normal, it's going to leave some of the original colors in there. So we want to do none, so it just completely overlays. And uh, we have to do this for all those other dust elements, so we'll change this to none. And you also may want to think about adding brightness variation to some of these elements. So I'll turn this one to 0, turn this one to 15, turn this one to negative 5. So we can just add some kind of brightness variation in this dust. Okay, and then if we select all of these dust elements, we can hit T for opacity and just kind of change the opacity if we think this dust effect is too intense. So we'll probably turn this down a good bit. All right, so um, as a last few adjustments, um, we could think about adding some camera shake as these ground cracks happen. And you can check out the motorcycle explosion tutorial to see how we can do some camera shake. But also we should add some motion blur to these crack elements because the camera pans to the side and there needs to be some motion blur to blend well with the footage. So we'll select all of these elements. We'll toggle switches till we see this motion blur icon. We'll click it here adds motion blur to all these layers, but we also need to enable motion blur for the composition. Okay, and then once we add those dust elements for those other cracks, it really helps it blend in. And uh, after we apply that color grade and a little bit of that camera shake we're talking about, we've got a pretty complete scene here. All right, uh, this tutorial in particular has been pretty fun. All these little bits of knowledge and tricks we covered today should for sure come in handy with everyday stock footage compositing. So hey, I've noticed these Action VFX tutorials are building up a little audience, so I'm glad you guys are going through these tutorials with us. I mean, each of these tutorials should have a pretty decent size uh, bouquet of knowledge. So, you know, knowledge is power, all that good stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. Alright, uh, be sure to stop by the website, actionvfx.com. Get yourself some ground crack elements. Uh, we've got some pretty great free stuff as well. So you guys start downloading, get that stock footage, improve those shots. My name is Lyndon, and I'll see you in the next Action VFX tutorial. Thank you.